Uh, my name is Jarden Lake. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. My family said a lot of shit. Uh, my family, when I think about my family, it's a lot. My, my mom, my mom has kind of been in this maze of just trying to understand, um, you know, more so she sees me as this like masculine dyke. Um, and so, you know, there's been kind of just like this evolution of how I sort of presented myself in terms of how I dressed. Um, and then I think more in my community, I use, you know, gender neutral pronouns, but like, Man, I remember, you know, having my little tomboy look. That was my little senior high school look. And then I decided to buy some uh, man pants, dress pants. And my mama was like stuttering mad, asking me like, why you, why you wearing, why you buying them? Why are you getting them? Why are you wearing them pants, y'all? You know, and um, her just really feeling away. And then fast forward, it, and I think there's a broad a lot of ambiguity for her like we don't talk a lot about my gender like identity um but now there's this new generation my niece and nephew you know they're like fresh spry you know little youngins and they got all kinds of questions and they they're curious all kinds of curiosities and so um the same place where I bought those man pants from I was in that thrift store with my niece and she was she's like said she just volunteered, said some shit like, um, sometimes I think you're a girl and a boy at the same time, but you're a girl, but you're a boy. Like she was like going through this whole thing. And I was like, oh shit, this is a great opportunity to like see what her thought process is. So I asked her questions and she's like, well, I think you're a girl and a boy at the same time, but you're not a boy. You're a girl. But when I was a baby, I, you know, so she's like just trying to figure things out. Um, so I think there's actually the younger generation, like my niece and nephew, that are sort of more so pushing the conversation. Like uh, it's more of a reckoning with them. You know, they like my family has to, you know, have a more open conversation about queerness and also my gender identity um through them because they want to know things and they're unabashed about like asking those kind of questions um and I talk to my niece and nephew you know what I'm saying I actually feel like soul connections to them in a real way and they're just a lot more open and agile so we can have those conversations you know and it actually pushes I think my family forward Well, my family, so most of, like, when I see family, when I think of my family, say family, it's my mom's side. So, you know, I proudly come from, like, you know, southern country folk. And so I think there's just a lot of ways where there are these very hard lines of gender roles, you know, things that men are supposed to do, things that women are supposed to do, and just not too much blurring across those lines. Even though I come from, like, a stock of women who have always kind of you know what i'm saying crossed those lines in terms of the jobs that they did how fierce they were you know all these ways that you would say like um is untraditional um but yeah i think it's that and i also i mean my family's also um i come from like a more so like um fundamentalist christian family and so there's just a lot of people's you know ideas of their own religion that play into it so i think it's more so just like they're not trying to fuck with getting into heaven, you know? So I think that deal, that, that, that crosses a lot into how they, how willing or open they are to sort of, um, yeah, just see another way. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I see that, um, well, I see that a lot in my little nephew. He's the little sensitive Scorpio um and he's just real tender um in terms of like my family and the stock of women that I come from yeah I mean I feel like um you know according to what they believe women are supposed to be uh really that independent they're very independent women aren't supposed to be outspoken you know there's this crazy stuff that talks about like an outspoken woman in the hen will make the end some kind of saying you know so it's very very strict in terms of like 
roles you're supposed to play um and my mom she's actually like a little bit of one of the rogue unicorns so i'm really grateful you know you know like what they say about you choosing your parents and your parents choosing you or you choosing your parents and so i think it was the sum of the saving grace has been being raised by her um because in a lot of ways just the way she's thought and lived has kind of been that that's been set aside from the the camp of my family traditionally of what folks are expected to do um yeah i mean i think just the way i was the way she raised us as her children in a lot of ways was just different from uh what sort of traditional roles were you know um well you know i think everybody has their own definition um i think for me like gender neutral my pronouns also have to do with just how i feel spiritually aligned so you know i feel like um some of how i sort of walk and carry myself in the world and then also like this i feel like actually like the spirits and ancestors that are with me so really it's just sort of like i feel like i'm a vessel to a spiritual energy that lives in me so that's how I would ex explain it to her. Um, it's just that, you know, people can, uh, people have the ability to sort of be connected through spirit to lots of different entities. Um, and so that's how it lives in me. Oh man, okay, okay, that's real good. Um, you know, I, I feel lucky because I know that I'm like the apple of I'm apple of my mom's eye, you know? Um, she loves the shit out of me. And we have this beautiful relationship. And I think she has evolved and she's grown. I think going back in time in that moment, um, I remember actually, okay, so there's this like mom show. It was like a Happy Mother's Day show that they did on VH1, Jada Pinkett. She was in it. And she said this thing that I thought was really profound. Uh, she was talking about her kids. She was talking about decisions she made over her career and la di da because her priority was her her children. And you know she gets all choked up and she was like, "Let me tell y'all, let me tell all y'all mothers, if you are blessed to have a child, your child is given a spark, all right?" She said, "Your job is to do what you can, you do everything you possibly can to make sure that your kid never loses that spark." So I think in the moment of like. Because it did dim my spark a little bit, you know, to, to feel this, like, rejection from my mom. And so I think I would have loved her to, you know, like, be curious, you know, to be like, oh, so you you into these man pants. Like, what what's, what's the look you're going for? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what about this? You know, does it make you feel good? Does it make you feel like sexy, cute? Like, what what you going for? Who you trying to look cute for? You know what I'm saying? Like, but in a curious, tender, loving way, you know, um, not an interrogation um, or not like a shaming because that's what I felt shame. And so it kind of made me like close up, go in. Um, so I think just like a, you know, a willingness to kind of like keep my spark um, bright would have been really good for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm.